as I said before, um, uh, the um, preempting in first position is okay. I do it frequently, um, but uh, you just have to be mindful of the fact that you do actually have a 30% chance or 33% chance that it's actually partner that you're going to be preempting rather than your opponents. Second seat is the the time when you really don't want to because now it's a 50% chance that you're going to be preempting partner because your right hand opponent hasn't got the strength to open. Um, third seat is the best time because now your partner's already passed so you're definitely preempting ops rather than your partner and fourth seat um, not much point really uh, because you're not really preempting anybody if you've got a weak hand and uh, everybody else has passed the chances are that uh, passing out is is probably going to be a good result for you guys if your partner's got less than 10 points or less than 11 um, so so third in hand is the best time First in hand is okay, and the times really when you might want to think about not preempting uh, is definitely in fourth, and to some extent in second. Okay, does that answer your question? I think most of the example hands I've got actually for today are first in hand preempt, just because it's easy to control the uh, the bidding that way. Any more questions before we go on? Okay, so that's covered the the uh, the requirements, if you like, uh, for a week two opening. Um, obviously, if you're playing precision, there's only two hearts and two spades in the mix. If you're playing standard American or two over one, you can include two diamonds in that as well. Um, but uh, not in precision. So the requirements for a week to opening in, in precision are, are absolutely no different than um, the requirements in any other system. Um, it's the continuations that you may find uh, definitely not the same as what you currently play. Um, but you might like to consider adopting some of these you can't adopt all of them, but you might be able to adopt some of them. Um, and uh, see how it compares to your current methods. If you if you uh, normally play standard American or two over one or even ACL. So that's the first thing over a week to playing OCP. This is um, or if you're going to adopt these methods. The two no trump response to a week two is Levensol. Um, it simply tells partners to bid three clubs and now you're going to sign off somewhere. So you might have an eight card diamond suit and partners open the first in hand week two um, and you've got a void in theirs and you figure that probably your eight card diamond suit is going to be a better place to play than their week two where they've probably only got six. Um, because three diamonds is a forcing bid, um, certainly no CP it is, uh, if you want to sign off in three diamonds, you've got to bid two no trumps first, part of the bids three clubs, and now you bid three diamonds, which is just telling him to pass that. But similarly, it may be that you want to sign off in three no trumps. Um, and the best way is to bid two no trumps first. They bid three clubs and now you bid three no trumps. And that could be potentially on any hand um, where you're happy if partner can just stop their major. And if they've got a six card suit in it, the chances are that they do contain a stop. Um, and you think you're going to make eight or nine tricks elsewhere. Uh, 
Okay, now we come to definitely another one of the, the OCP specific sequences and um, most people if they're if they're not used to OCP would play two no trumps as their inquiry bid over a week two. Uh, like I said, OCP doesn't we use two no trumps as Lebensol and we use a relay in the next suit up as our forcing inquiry. So I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, I'm just going to explain first what the other possibilities are. So over two hearts, two spades is the inquiry bid, and over two spades, three clubs is the inquiry bid. And that's asking for a further description of um, opener's hand. And I'll said I'll go through the responses to that forcing inquiry in just a minute. Okay, so this is definitely an OCP specific um, thing um, because you won't use asking bids uh, unless you're using OCP. So a relay in the second cheapest new suit, i.e. two hearts, three clubs, or two spades, three diamonds, we use as an asking bid in openers major. Um, we've now established that we're in a game forcing sequence and we're in an asking bid sequence so um, responder could be unlimited here uh, but responders taken charge of the auction um, but effectively agreeing openers major in the process Okay, so anything else apart from uh, direct suit raises? Oh, hang on. No, I didn't cover direct raises. Sorry. Okay, so two spades, three spades, 100% preemptive, not invitational in any way it's it is totally preemptive same with two spades four spades um, two spades five spades I would suggest is probably invitational to six um, but I don't think that's a route that I would suggest there must be better ways there's certainly cheaper ways um, so direct suit direct suit raises of openers major are 100% preemptive um, if you've got a strong hand, you're going to either use the forcing inquiry or the asking bid. Um, but really and honestly, I don't suggest that you use anything other than the responses that I've outlined. In other words, if partner opens a week two spades, if you've got a huge hand with hearts, you could bid three hearts and that's natural and forcing. But what I would ask you to consider is this. If you've got a big hand with say six or seven or even eight hearts and a singleton spade and you've got a strong hand, it's a decent hand, what are the chances of you getting any use out of partner's hand unless you play in their spade suit. If you've got a really strong hand full of aces and kings, you can afford to lose uh, two or maybe even three trump tricks and just rely on your strength to get the rest. But if you play in your long suit, there's a good chance that you might make one trick from partner's hand, but that's going to be it. And unless you've got nine tricks in your hand you're likely to get a better result playing in partners long suit the weak hands long suit than you are playing in the strong hands long suit so just do consider that um, so cheapest new suit relay is a forcing inquiry two no trumps is Levensol. 
um, if you're not playing asking bids then those really are the only two um, responses that I feel you should be considering apart from the purely preemptive direct suit raises if you're using asking bids then the the relay in the second cheapest new suit is available for that but that's always asking in openers major rather than anything else if you have a hand that's potentially worth an invitation then the forcing inquiry is the way to go and that's what we're going to look at now I say almost always, uh, and I do mean almost always, if you've got 11 tricks in your own hand in hearts and partner opens a week two in spades, I'm not suggesting if you've got a void spade that you should necessarily be supporting their spades. So now just bid three hearts uh, and that is natural and forcing. So partner can't pass it if you bid three hearts. They've got to do something like bid three spades, bid three no trumps, bid four hearts even. Um, but they can't pass two spades, three hearts. But you might consider going via the forcing inquiry um, because you're going to find out a bit more potentially about partner's hand. OK, let's have a look at the forcing inquiry. Unless there's any questions before we, we start on that. No, uh, Wendy, the, if you bid the next suit up, like um, South has here, they've bid three clubs over two spades, um, that's very specifically asking for a further description of their hand. And it's, it's along fairly constrained lines. Uh, there are, you know, each bid actually means something in particular. Okay. Um, so here, South has a strong hand. They've got uh, first round control of, of hearts and clubs. They've got singleton diamond. They've got decent trump support. Um, and they've got a nice hand. So uh, they're potentially, you know, you could easily be looking at a slam here uh, if North has the right kind of cards. But uh, um, South wants to find out a bit more about north range and about uh, if they're upper range where they might have singletons or second four card suits or anything else so so the three club inquiry is just a forcing inquiry Okay, so so here, three spades shows a minimum week two. Anything else that North bids apart from three spades is showing an upper range hand. Doesn't have to be maximum, but just an upper range hand. So if you take, it depends on the strength you agree with your partner for your week twos. So I tend to use five to nine. If I've got a 10 count, I tend to upgrade or downgrade it accordingly to either uh, a one level opening or a week two. 
Um, you can play six to ten. You can play anything you like. But within that range, um, if you got five to nine, I would tend to take five to a poor seven as lower range and a decent seven up to nine as upper range. Uh, if you want to play it differently, that's fine. As long as you and your partner are on the same wavelength, that's fine. So over two hearts, two spades, two no trumps is used to show a minimum holding. Just because it's cheaper, um, there's actually nothing particularly wrong in bidding three hearts. Uh, but I would tend to, to use two no trumps rather because it's definitely the cheapest option. Okay, so um, we started off with two spades. So over two spades, three clubs, three diamonds and three hearts um, are, are all showing an upper range hand but with a, sh a singleton somewhere. So uh, or possibly even a void and the way OCP works it is that two spades three clubs three diamonds shows a heart shortage because we tend to bid the suit below and two spades three clubs three hearts shows a minor suit shortage over two hearts two spades again two no trump shows the minimum hand um, now three clubs shows diamond shortage three diamond shows a spade shortage and three hearts shows a club shortage because we're always it's on this same wheel that you've you've seen uh, when we're looking at uh, mini splinters and so on um, you just have to work out how the wheel is going to apply from the cheapest possible one and then work it upwards from there. But do bear in mind that over two spades you are either showing a heart shortage or a minor suit shortage. You can't, there isn't the space to specify. And very often those are going to be hands which are 6331 in shape. Um, If you've got a week two, tend to open week twos with uh, a six card suit. If you've got a seven card suit, I personally would always tend to open at the three level rather than the two level. Um, so if you've got a void, by definition, you will normally have a second four card suit, which is what we're going to come to in a minute, not just yet. So here, on this particular hand, North is going to bid three spades, showing a lower range hand. So all thoughts of a slam now will pretty much go out the window. Um, and South is just going to bid four spades, saying if you're lower range, then, then um, we'll just play in game. And the inference of this sequence is that if... Uh, North had shown an upper range hand, South might have gone looking for a slam. Give North, for example, the ace queen of spades uh, instead of the queen jack. That's still a nine count, so we're still in the range for um, a week two opening. But now he'd have bid something other than three spades. Um, I think here probably he would have bid uh, three hearts to show a minor shoot sort of suit shortage, uh, but he could have bid four diamonds, which is we'll come to in a minute to show a second four card suit. Uh, 
Okay, any questions at this time before we move on to the four level rebids by uh, um, by opener over the forcing inquiry? Okay. Okay, so three no trumps um, is simply showing almost always a 6-3-2-2 shape hand, um, but with scattered values. In other words, the trump suit may not be first class, but you do potentially have some help elsewhere. Um, uh, and it's possible that three no trumps is going to be uh, a better resting place than four of a major, especially if um, Responder's got a long minor somewhere that he can run and not very good support for the major. Okay, so um, if you've got the sort of hand that North has here, and north was upper range or certainly significantly better than lower range than minimum um, with this hand he would have the option of either showing the club shortage or showing the four card suit in diamonds and it's really entirely up to uh, to, to north which one of those two they show there's nothing wrong in bidding four diamonds on this hand over uh, three clubs. And that implies a shortage in one or other of the red suits. Um, maybe even both if he's 6-5-1-1. One, one. Um, or he could just show the minor shoot shortage by bidding three hearts over three clubs. And that would tend to suggest to South that he had a club shortage. It's not likely he's got a diamond shortage, really, when South's got a diamond shortage. Um, and so South's now getting a, a more accurate picture of North's hand and how they, the two fit together. Um, personally, I, I like to have an honour. I wouldn't... An honourless four-card suit like North has here, um, I wouldn't tend to show as a feature um, at the four level. I would probably be more likely to show the club shortage. Okay, any questions before we have a quick look at how this forcing inquiry sequence goes when there's a bit of opposition and interference from ops? So generally speaking, the three level bids um, tend to show shortages apart from two hearts, two spades, two no trumps and two spades, three clubs, three spades, which both show the minimum hand or the lower range hand. Um, and the four level suit bids and two hearts, two spades, three spades all show four card suits outside the agreed major or the major that, that opens opened. No questions? Okay. Okay, so if you can bid the, the same bid that you would have bid no it's simply we're simply dealing in range well it well I think I've just given you that Ellie if you're not listening did you not hear me
because I just explained that. Can you hear me, Ellie, or not? All right, guys, just bear with me a minute. I'm just going to type some stuff. Okay, I, I've just explained, Ellie, that um, it's, it's really a matter of personal preference. There aren't any guidelines here. If you've got the, the kind of shape hand that North has, they could either show the four-card diamond suit or they could show a minor suit, suit shortage. They can't do both, obviously. But if you show a four-card diamond suit, clearly North will have uh, a shortage in either hearts or clubs or possibly even both. So normally, showing the four-card suit, I find, is more helpful. But when it's such a poor suit here, as it is here, I would tend to... Uh, show the shortage instead. But if you give North, say, even um, Queen 984 in diamonds on this hand, that now takes them into an upper range hand, and I would bid four diamonds rather than three hearts to show the, the minor suit shortage. Okay? Okay, so back to intervention. If partner makes the forcing inquiry and ops overcall something, um, if you, uh, yeah, Wendy, I'm saying if North was upper range, he isn't, but if he was upper range with the shape hand that he has then it's a matter for North as to whether they show the four-card diamond suit or show a minor suit shortage. On the hand in question, they bid three spades to show a lower range hand. Right. Okay, back to interference. Third time. Um... If you can complete your normal response over the interference, then do it. But bear in mind that bids at the three level and bids at the four level are meaning and showing different things. So, for the sake of example, uh, supposing... South bids three clubs and West came in with three diamonds, for the sake of example. Okay, if, if opener is lower range, they always pass over the interference, always. Pass, that's what pass shows if, if West interferes here. If they have an upper range hand, then if they can complete the bid that they would normally have completed, then they do so. So over three clubs uh, here, um, three spades would show um, sorry, just hang on a minute. Okay, sorry. Um, over over two spades, three clubs. If if and only if North had an upper range hand, they haven't here. But if they did, and West came in with three diamonds over three clubs. Oh, for fuck's sake! It's 
Bear with me a minute, guys. Okay, I've changed the hand slightly here. Okay, so here, three clubs is a forcing inquiry. Three diamonds, just an overcall. North is um, upper range. They've got an eight count this time because of the queen of diamonds. So now they've got an option. They can either show the diamonds or they can show... Uh, the shortage. So here, and the bidding would then go on. And because South can tell that um, north shortage almost certainly going to be in clubs the hands actually aren't fitting all that well here alternatively um, it's possible that uh, maybe not in this instance when, when West has bid three diamonds um, they could still bid that and again the bidding would go on but that's what the four diamond bid would show Just bear with me a minute. So that's actually what would happen if West came in with three diamonds. Is that North now, the Queen of Diamonds has gone. Um, North just back to a, a bare six count. So they would pass over three diamonds and that would show any lower range hand. Whatever his distribution was, it would show any lower range hand. Okay, any questions? Okay, so next one is if ops interfere directly over the week two opening. So now this is when East comes in here over two spades before South can make the forcing inquiry. So once again, as before, direct suit ruses are 100% preemptive. A bid in a new suit is natural and forcing. So a double um, or two no trumps in the sequence two hearts two spades two no trumps is 11 sol 
that forces a bit in the next suit up by opener. And now uh, any any bids after that are non forcing into play by responder. Now, actually, this is quite an interesting sequence. Because three spades here pretty much has to be invitational rather than uh, to play. If South just wanted to compete in spades, they could just bid three spades over three clubs because that would be natural and non-forcing. So the inference of this is that that is actually invitational. So if North has a, a better than average hand, um, they want to be in four spades. You could even say that this is potentially interested in North suit quality in spades rather than anything else. Because, as we'll see in a minute, um, uh, you've got you've got other potential means if you if you want to force. But we if if second in hand over the week two bids something, then uh, we lose the forcing inquiry sequence effectively. but we keep Levensol. So um, bids that don't include the Levensol sequence are natural but forcing. And if you just want to sign off somewhere, then uh, you can just double over the interference or bid two no trumps over two hearts, two spades. And that is still Levensol and that would then allow you to sign off somewhere. But this particular instance, because two clubs, sorry, two spades, three clubs, three spades would be just competitive or preemptive. There's an inference when South goes via uh, the Levensol sequence of double three diamonds and then three spades, that that's actually invitational. Any questions? So here, I'll just send this again. So I think North would probably assume that South had a six card heart suit and because three hearts is forcing, um, four hearts seems the obvious thing to bid with the North hand um, because South will probably normally have a six card heart suit or 
the three hearts is simply there as a forcing bid and actually they're always intending to play this hand in spades but the chances are that that if if south south's either very strong with a six card or longer heart suit or they probably have spades as well and three hearts is just a forcing bid to find out a little bit more about north's hand okay Susie you're welcome okay any other questions on week twos like I said I'm not covering the asking bid sequences today because we haven't covered the asking bids uh, we do revisit week twos uh, once we have looked at gamma um, which is the asking bid in question um, so we come back to week twos um, later on in the series after we've looked at and dealt with the asking bids uh, it's not worth covering it at the moment so that's the two hearts uh, three club and two spades three diamond bids it's not a matter of what I allow um, I've I've opened a week two on a five card suit um, almost always third in hand not vulnerable um, and when ops are vulnerable uh, I don't often, I don't do it often. I used to do it occasionally with uh, when I was playing with Jason Hackett years and years and years ago. Um, no, I play generally speaking. I play week twos as a six card suit with five to nine. I tend to open three if I've got a seven card suit rather than two. The idea of preempts is to preempt. Um, so if I can open at the three level, I will do. Uh, like I said, I don't often do it now, um, but uh, it depends on you and your partner and whether you've got the skills and the understanding to cope with uh, you doing it on a five card suit. And I'm not talking about partner thinking that you haven't got six. I'm talking about your own skills as declarer if you get into um, a slightly dodgy game. Um, but third in hand when partners already passed it's unlikely that you're you're going to get into trouble however good partners support for your major is so if it goes pass pass and I'm sat there with you know queen jack ten to five hearts and a three count yes I might consider bidding two hearts because it's making life more awkward for opponents so it's not a question of whether I allow it the system specification in OCP certainly is that it's a six card suit if you decide to do it on five that's fine poor you John um, no problem sorry to hear you having problems well if it's working for you I'm glad it is <laughs> I don't see why you should be embarrassed John we've all done that I once uh, made a comment to a friend who was also giving a hand um, which was clearly because I'd figured it out uh, uh, saying what declarer's line in a particular contract should be um, but I um, mistakenly sent it to the room instead and the declarer in question was uh, Mr. Benito Garozzo and I was I would that's the definition of being hugely embarrassed I was correct but it's not the sort of thing you want to send in a, the middle of a teams match um, and I don't know how it was that I was able to send it to the room um, no maybe it wasn't a team's match I think he might just have been playing 
at a table and they hadn't disallowed comments for some reason um, but that was uh, rather embarrassing much more than uh, just explaining your problems with keyboards and browsers and so on absolutely right Sonia okay if there's no more questions about week twos we'll move on okay so uh, I apologize now for those of you who actually have no interest in in OCP as a bidding system um, uh, just close your ears for the next um, 10 minutes uh, you might find it interesting but but you will not want to play this opening if you play standard American or two over one okay in classic way precision uh, two no trumps is strong balanced um, for OCP purposes that's a complete waste of time because we have a different way of showing um, strong balanced ranges uh, so there's no point having two no trumps are strong balanced so we use it as a multi-style opening oh, um, it's just Levensol it's it's Levensol the concept rather than Levensol as in um, anything else particularly particularly Wendy when uh, it's over interference if, if there's no interference then two no trumps is the bid that people normally associate with Levensol so it is pure Levensol just tells partner to bid three clubs and you're either going to pass three clubs or you're going to bid something else as a sign off but when ops have interfered the use of double or two no trumps in the case of two hearts and interference of two spades um, the use of double as Levensol is using the Levensol concept without actually using two no trumps. But it's still Levensol. Where was I? Okay, so uh, no point for OCP in having two no trumps as strong balanced. So instead, uh, we use we use um, two no trumps as a multi-style opening, and it shows one of those three cans. It's either a, a normal preempting clubs, or it's weak with at least five five in the minors, or it can be eleven to fifteen, i.e. intermediate, and exactly five five in the majors. Um, if you're playing in an ACBL sponsored competition um, or if you're playing face to face anywhere in North America um, then you can't use this opening um, I'll come back to that in a minute but uh, the ACBL will not allow you to use uh, this opening if you're just playing on BBO at a normal table um, fill your boots you can certainly use this because ACBL rules only apply in ACBL sponsored competitions or governed competitions okay so OCP uses three clubs as an intermediate opening um, so if we didn't use two no trumps as a club preempt we wouldn't have a club preempt at the three level and actually we wouldn't have it at the four level either because four clubs is Nam Yats um, in OCP so if you wanted to preempt in clubs you'd have to do it at the five level uh, if we didn't have this the uh, um, the intermediate hand um, with both majors 
having having two no trumps as this potentially makes life a lot easier for responder um, when opener shows a major two suitor. So if it goes one spade, one no trump, two hearts, responder's much better off if he knows that opener cannot be five five. Might be six five. Um, but he cannot be 5-5, five, five, so he's probably 5-4. And that can make it a lot easier for a responder to judge uh, where they want to play. Um, two no trumps is unusual with both minors and weak is very, very preemptive. And that's the most common thing that it's used for. Okay, so you might think this is horrendously complex. Uh, actually, if you're new to OCP and you're learning OCP, um, it's surprisingly simple um, once you understand the concept behind the responses. Any questions so far with, with what you open with two no trumps, or rather what sort of hands you have when you open? I haven't got room in the alert box, sorry. <laughs> Nearly. Okay, any questions on, on the requirements for the opening or what the opening can show before we look at the actual responses? So here, north is 5 to 9, 5 5 in the minors. Um, Okay, they're first in hand, but it's not vulnerable against vulnerable. So that's a perfectly good and very preemptive opening. Okay, Oliver's twist, uh, you will get an idea about it. Um, from what I'm going to say in a minute. The idea of Oliver's twist is that where partner has shown an unspecified single suit, particularly, um, for example, a brosel or a don't style double over one no trump, what partner tends to do rather than automatically relaying in the cheapest possible bid that they can is that they bid the cheapest suit at the the level that they wouldn't support that suit at any higher if that sounds complicated what it means is that with any weak hand you bid the cheapest suit possible but if you have um, a hand that's invitational or forcing not forcing but invitational at least what you would tend to do is you would bid um, the cheapest possible suit that you wouldn't support at any higher level in other words suppose for the sake of example that on the hands shown here West was the dealer and had opened a 10 to 12 one no trump and North doubled to show a single suited hand what South might do here is to bid two diamonds. The implication being that if partners got diamonds, then two diamonds is where they want to play. Because two diamonds is the cheapest suit that South wouldn't support at a higher level. It shows definite game interest if North has got clubs because they've gone past clubs and it may show or conceal game interest in either major because you haven't reached them but basically what it's saying is I've got good support for clubs I don't have good support for diamonds if you've got diamonds let's just play in two diamonds if you've got clubs we'll definitely 
look towards five clubs and if you've got a major just bid it and we'll see whether I support it further or not okay so that's Oliver's twist in a nutshell and um, you will recognize the logic behind that in South's responses to uh, the two no Trump opening Okay, so if if South's got a weak hand, essentially, yes, it is. I, I mean, a multi-two diamonds effectively uses Oliver's twist, um, and indeed, that's where Oliver's twist originated. Is from the standard uh, scheme of responses to a multi-two diamonds. We've just taken it away from that, and we've used it in a number of other places in OCP not just over a multi two diamonds Susie but yes you're absolutely right and that's where I got the idea from so it's not really my idea but it was my idea to use it elsewhere uh, and we just gave it a name <laughs> um, okay so the idea well I'm, I'm very very good at taking other people's ideas when they're good ideas and um, using them in other places Levensol is a very good case in point. Uh, most, peop most people play Levensol only in one or two situations. Uh, OCP uses Levensol all over the place um, because it's such a good bidding concept. Okay, right. Um, okay, so if if responder over two no trumps has a hand that has no game interest if partners got the club preempt or the minors what they tend to do is to show their preference between the minors at the three level so here if if uh, north is five to nine with both minors or has got a club preempt uh, we've got no serious ambitions towards five clubs. Um, if partners got a club preempt, and if they've got the minors, we just want to play in three clubs. We've got no first round controls. The chances are that we're going to lose at least three tricks straight off the top. So there's no point looking further than clubs. So all that says is if you've got clubs or both minors let's play in clubs and the little bit towards the end of that paragraph simply suggests that if you've got relatively similar preference between the minors um, suppose you've got three card diamond support and two card club support that's relatively similar I would tend to give preference to clubs just in case partners got the club preempt rather than both minors. You don't have to worry if they've got the majors because they're going to bid something else over three clubs. Give me four diamonds and a singleton club and I will bid three diamonds because now you've got a big difference in your preference between clubs and diamonds. Um, and it probably is going to end up involving you playing at the four level in clubs here if that was the case but where you've got preference for clubs or even or even not quite even preference between clubs and diamonds I would tend to give preference to clubs rather than diamonds just in case partners got the club preempt rather than both minors it might sometimes involve you playing in a say a 5-2 fit rather than a 5-3 fit in diamonds um, but over a period of time you'll find it safer and more productive to do that okay so with a weak hand uh, or one that's only got game interest if partners got the majors 
you give preference between the miners. That's that's the first rule, basically. Okay, so supposing South bids three clubs um, or three diamonds and North had both majors. Here they've got the miners and they're just going to pass. If South bids three clubs or three diamonds, they're just going to pass it because that's the way it works. Suppose, though, North had both majors. Now, if, if partner bids three clubs, they have two possible bids to show the majors. And as I've shown there, um, over two no trumps three clubs as here if north had the majors and they were upper range i.e. a good 13 to 15 they would bid three diamonds if they were lower range i.e. 11 to a poor 13 they would bid three hearts rather than three diamonds so three diamonds shows the upper range three hearts shows the lower range if South had bid three diamonds here rather than three clubs, then North always bids three hearts to show the majors. So now, you know, if that happens, now we know that uh, North is 11 to 15 with exactly 5-5 five five in the majors, um, and South can either pass, raise, bid slam, whatever they want. Um, Hang on a second, I've got a dog climbing all over me. Okay, any questions on that hand first and what I've covered so far in terms of Oliver's twist and um, the, the, the responses that just show preference between the miners? And as I've said there, um, if, South, if, if South here bid three diamonds to show preference for diamonds... Right, the three diamond response simply says um, diamonds is my preference between the miners. In other words, I've got very much better support for diamonds than I have for clubs. But if you've got either, if you've got the miners, that's where I want to play, three diamonds. Well... You'll you'll see in a minute, Susie. Okay, just give me a chance to uh, to explain all the possible responses, because there's a lots of other responses that that responder can make over two no trumps, not just what I've said. Okay, just bear with me because I think I'll cover um, that. The main thing is that if 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 South has no ambitions past the three level. If North has the miners, then they simply show their preference between the miners at the three level. Rather than immediately starting supporting a major. That's the difference. Okay. This is only vaguely like responses to multi. Uh, only valid in terms of whether you use it or not. If I was second in hand at red against green, you wouldn't catch me opening two no trumps with 5-5 uh, five, five in the minors um, for love or money. But if I'm first or third in hand at green against red, bring it on. Okay. Okay, so... South might have a fairly strong hand here, but they would still 
Uh, it depends on the makeup of their hand. No, it's it, Wendy. It's down to what I said about week twos. The trouble is when you open a week two or a preempt or this um, two no trump opening second in hand. There's a 50% chance that it's partner that you're going to be preempting rather than the opponent. Exactly. If you're third in hand, then by definition, partner has already passed. When you're second in hand, they haven't. If you're first in hand, they haven't. But now there's a 33% chance only that partner will have the highest, the, the strongest hand outstanding. But when you're second in, in hand, that raises to rises to 50%. That's the only issue about second in hand. Okay, I've opened preempt second in hand. Um, I just tend to be a little bit more circumspect about when I do it, and how good a preempt it is. And I'm not talking about necessarily high card point strength. I'm talking about how good the suit is, what my distribution is, and so on, um, and what the vulnerability is. Certainly, second in hand, I probably wouldn't do it if I was red against green. Not because it's more dangerous, but because there's too big a chance of us missing a vulnerable game if partner's got the strong hand. Okay. Um, where was I? Okay, so um, South could have quite a strong hand here and still bid three clubs if um, they had absolutely no interest in game unless partner had the majors. For example, um, let's make South, give South, give South 5-5 five, five in the majors, for example. And they've got a, a singleton diamond and a doubleton club. But quite a good hand. I would still bid three clubs over two no trumps. Because the chances that partner has the majors is very small now when I'm 5-5 five, five in the majors. So it's much more likely that partner's got either both minors or a club preempt. And if they've got either of them, most of the strength in my hand is going to be completely wasted. So I'm just going to give preference to clubs. And if partner's got the minors or clubs, they're going to pass it. Okay. Um, so giving preference to one of the minors doesn't necessarily say that South's got nothing. It simply says that if Barton's got the minors or clubs, we can't afford to play above the three level. Bearing in mind that if South does, sorry, if North does turn out to have the majors, they're going to show it. And now we can burst into life. Okay, so that's that's weak hands or hands where responder is only interested if partner's got the majors. Okay, so now we're moving on to responder having an invitational strength hand. with good support, and I'm really talking about four card support at least, for at least one minor and at least one major. Now what they do is instead of giving preference between the minors, they give preference between the majors at the three level. So just bear with me a second. I'm just going to um, change this hand slightly.
Sorry, just bear with me a second. Okay, I've just changed the, the south hand slightly. Um, so here, south has a hand that's that's that potentially even you could consider them slightly too strong, but. Um, uh, Really now they're potentially interested in game whatever North has. So what they would tend to do is to give their preference between the majors Okay, so what they tend to do is they give preference between the majors, and this shows an invitational strength hand. You certainly won't be much stronger than this. If you were much stronger than this, you'd be bidding something else again. Um, and so this is definitely invitational if partners got the majors. And potentially invitational if partners got clubs or the minors and it doesn't have to be that you've got clubs it might be that you've got diamonds rather than clubs but you could still bid three hearts here um, and we'll come back to continuations in a minute so if uh, North here has both majors, but they've got an absolutely abject 11 count, then they might pass this. If they wouldn't accept the invitation. Obviously, if they would accept the invitation and they had both majors, they'd just bid four hearts. Um... This isn't the perfect hand, to be honest, for a three heart bid, but uh, it's enough to illustrate the idea. Um, okay, if if opener, instead of having the majors, has the club preempt, they bid three no trumps over this. And if they've got the minors, both minors, they bid four clubs. And so, do we want to be in game? We need partner to have an ace somewhere, and there's no guarantee that they have. Um, we've potentially got to get the spades right here. Um, really, if partner's 5-5 five, five in the minors, I would probably tend to go quietly and pass four clubs. So the three heart bid is not game forcing, but it's a hand where South can afford to invite in a major if they can at least tolerate playing at the four level happily in a minor. And you might make 11 tricks. It depends on which way you decide to finesse the clubs and so on. Um, but you could make only nine tricks here.
potentially if you get the clubs wrong and you get the spades wrong. Um, you could lose two spades, a heart and a club, potentially. But you might make 11 tricks. On a balance, though, uh, I think I'd stop in four on these, this particular hand. Any questions so far? OK, so we've covered Responder giving their preference between the minors and we've covered Responder giving their preference between the majors. Here, obviously, South could bid three hearts or three spades. He doesn't really have a preference, but the point is he would bid a major to show the invitational kind of strength hand. And there is there is scope here for North to um, to do something other than just bidding four clubs. For example, um, I said that over um, three hearts or three spades by South, North would bid three no trumps if they had the club preempt. And, and that's always the case, no matter how good or bad a, pre a preempt it is. Three no chumps simply shows the club preempt, and South can either choose to pass it or um, or try and play somewhere else like clubs. If partner bids four clubs, um, they're showing the minors, and I did say that it could be at least five five in the minors. They might be. Um, nearly upper range or nearly maximum as north is here and they might even be 6-5 or 5-6 in the majors in the minors rather so there's an option over three hearts given that three hearts is invitational that north could bid five clubs rather than four clubs if they had a particularly distributional hand that was upper range because effectively what north is saying is if you're invitational and you've got a major and a minor, I've got both minors um, and I accept your invitation. So either pass five clubs or convert to five diamonds. So when, when North bids four clubs, there's an inference that they're either lower range or maybe mid range and they're giving South the option. Moving on. OK, I'm not going to deal with all the sequences over this, but um, as I've said there, you, you can find all the details uh, on the website, on the OCP website, if you look up on the 2 No Trump page. But basically, if Responder has a strong, balanced hand that wants to play in three no trumps if partner's got a club preempt or both minors and wants to play in at least game if not slam if partner has 11 to 15 with both majors then they bid three no trumps so that says if you've got the minors or clubs just pass if you've got the majors then um, bid four clubs and that shows both majors and four diamonds and four hearts show very very distributional hands with both minors um, probably six five or even six six or seven five in other words where they really are worried about playing in three no trumps you can bid four diamonds or four hearts um, and uh, uh, there's details of that on the site. OK, any questions there? I'm not sure I've got a, an example hand of that.
Just bear with me a second. I do. So here, south is strong balanced. Um, they've actually got a nice 20 count here. Um, if it turned out that north had um, the majors, then clearly they would be looking for a slam in, in either major, knowing that north exactly 5-5. Five, five. Um, and uh, but if partner has a club preempt, which is what they've got here, or if they had both minors, south stops in the majors are good enough um, that they want to give three no trumps a try rather than five clubs or five diamonds. So they just bid three no trumps, and when north has the major, the minors or clubs, they just pass. Okay, so any questions about the three no trump response? That's a fairly easy one. Um, But bear in mind that, that South here does have to be nearly as strong as that to want to bid three no trumps. Because they've got to have potentially support for both miners. Um, uh, or certainly for at least one of them. And good stops in the majors. Bearing in mind that the opening lead is going to come through their hand, not up to their hand. Okay, so we've covered weak hands, we've covered invitational strength hands, we've covered strong balanced hands, and the last one we need to look at is strong distributional hands. And again, this pretty much needs to be hands with a major and a minor. If you've got a strong distributional hand with both majors, Sod's Law says that partner's got both minors or clubs um, and so you don't necessarily want to go this route if you've got that but uh, it does depend on the strength of your hand and so on okay so um, let me just find you an example of that one So West isn't balanced now, um, and whether partner's got clubs or both minors or both majors, West is thinking about a slam here. Doesn't really matter what uh, what East has; he's looking at a slam. <coughs> So 
So here, East would bid four diamonds if they had the both majors. And four hearts shows both minors. Okay, now I can. Th there are a lot of um, uh, bids that come into play after this, but they're mostly asking bids, um, and I'm not going to cover those in detail here. Um, in the absence of the asking bids, West is probably just going to bid six clubs. Um, on the basis that uh, partners likely to have the king of clubs and uh, if you want to come up with other sequences like four no trumps over four hearts as Roman key card blackwood that's fine um, but uh, most of the sequences beyond this point are for asking bids and like I said I can't cover them now and what I've said there applies uh, um, the 11 to 15 hands with both majors do come up occasionally uh, but the three no trump and four club responses are quite rare. So most often responder gives preference between the minors and maybe comes to life if opener shows the majors. And that's usually the way it is. Um, the other ones do occur, but it's not very often. So if you, if you are wanting to learn OCP and you do live in North America in the US uh, and you potentially want to play OCP in face-to-face -face competition then that's the definition of playing in ACBL land um, you're gonna have to modify this opening you can't use it you can play it as two no trumps being unusual in the minors and that's what most people who are in that position do they play two no trumps simply as weak with both minors um, they absorb they change the three level openings um, so that they do have a club preempt um, absorb the three club opening that OCP uses back into two clubs which shows 11 to 15 with clubs and they absorb the 11 to 15 with both majors back into the one spade opening and, and you can do that it, it causes minor inconvenience um, but at least it allows you to to play the two no trump as both minors which can be very useful okay any questions on the two no trump opening before we go any further okie coke I don't do one on defending against this two no trump opening but in truth um, it's a little bit it's a little bit like defending against multi in the sense that the two no trump opening itself is forcing Susie so you know no it's not indefensible sorry if you if you know how to defend against multi the same methods essentially um, will work for defending against this because two no trumps itself is forcing so if you're second in hand over the two no trump bid you know that you're going to get two bites at the cherry so if you're familiar with the Dixon defense to two no trump to sorry to a multi then if south is second in hand you could play an immediate double as being showing values but generally and for takeout but showing sort of 11 to 15 
and you can do a delayed double as being 16 plus so that's a strong takeout double um, alternatively you can simply you can simply pass over two no trumps south you know responders going to bid something and north will either then pass or they'll bid something to show the majors that's how it works if responder bids three no trumps or four clubs then probably you're well out of it because clearly it's going to be their hand if partner sorry if responder shows a preference between the minors if opener has the minors or clubs they're going to pass unless responder bids three diamonds and they've got the club preempt but either way if you pass a second in hand you're going to find out basically how strong south is and how what kind of hand north has before the bidding comes back to you okay the problem comes if you're fourth in hand because now you have to judge because you probably are only going to get one bite at the cherry so you have to judge what the likelihood is of opener having one particular hand or the other so you have to look at your own hand and what responders bid and then decide whether you need to come in immediately or whether you think it's likely that uh, opener is going to bid again to show the majors for example or a club preempt um, okay I, I, I mean I, but I don't do a specific le lesson on defending against the two no trump I have too much fun playing it <laughs> okay on to uh, on to preempt okay um the only difference really with with OCP as a bidding system is that our three club opening is not a club preempt that's why two no trumps can be a club preempt because three clubs is 11 to 15 with six card clubs and exactly a four card major um, and for various reasons it suits us to take that out of the two club opening um, so that's a, an intermediate opening but apart from that um, our three level preempts and four level preempts are probably the same as what you play we play namyats ie four clubs and four diamonds are good four level preempts in a major four hearts and four spades i.e. their constructive preempt and four hearts and four spades are obstructive preempt i.e. they are poor uh, four level preempt in either major and whether you go beyond game in the major has entirely to do with um, responders hand but it's showing the different kinds of, of preempt Um, but I'm almost willing to bet that that's probably what you play you may not play Namyat uh, and if you play four clubs and four diamonds it's just four level preempts and that's fine four level preempts in a minor I mean so we do come to the club the three club opening in a bit uh, but not yet okay so as I said there is a what I'm teaching you in this series is the um, simple version of this system there is something called the complex version and the two and three level openings are totally different to what I've outlined today even the two diamond opening which is a strong opening uh, is different than the simple system in the complex system two diamonds is a multi um, whereas in the simple system two diamonds is 
16 to 23 points with any 4441 distribution. But the complex version is a multi where that is one of the options, but it has other options as well. So we do cover the complex version at the end of the series, but it probably won't be until um, fairly late in this year. That's uh, very sensible, Susie. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to persuade any of you to start looking at the complex system at this stage. If you've already learned OCP and you're comfortable with the system, the simple system, then by all means have a look at the complex system. But there is absolutely no point having a look at the complex system before you've got the simple system completely buttoned up and under your belt. Um, as John Lute says in his excellent books on OCP, um, uh, that's very true, Susie. Yes, you do. Um, but uh, as John says in his books, uh, if precision gives you a sort of 50% advantage over 2 over 1 and standard American, OCP takes that up to about, the simple version of OCP takes that up to about 95% um, of the advantage that you're going to get. And the complex version is only arguably perhaps 5% more efficient and more um, uh, precise, if you like, than the simple system. It's the icing on the cake. Um, the complex system is huge fun to play, massive fun. Um, but it's not giving you a tremendous advantage in terms of bidding capability and um, the ability to, to really specify what you have because the simple system gives you most of that. Okay, any questions before we uh, practice a few hands? Can I have four victims, please? We haven't got time for many hands. Thank you, Paula. Anybody else? Oops. Three more, please. Come on, guys. Don't be shy. Time is money. Thank you all. Let's get to it. Oh, ah, yes. Hang on, a, hang on a second, guys. Just wait a minute. Um, no, just wait. Paula, just wait. Okay, now you can go on. Go on, Wendy. So, the uh, full disclosure card will help you a little bit. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> No, it, I've loaded it for you, Susie. Okay, so so two hearts, 
no problem. Two hearts is a week two in hearts. Two spades is the forcing inquiry. So you're up a range, so you can now either um, show a shortage. So here, two no trump shows any lower range hand. So the way that we play it is that three clubs would show a diamond shortage, three diamond shows a heart shortage, and three hearts shows a, a club shortage. Sorry, what am I talking about? Three diamond shows a spade shortage, and three hearts shows a club shortage. Alternatively, you could bid four diamonds, which would show an upper range hand with a second suit in diamonds of at least four card length. So now Wendy knows that you're upper range and knows that you've got a club shortage. Yes, I mean, they might, she might be a bursting maximum, Wendy. But certainly she's good mid-range or upper range. So I presume we're playing this as Roman key card. A quick glance at... Uh, Okay, you both look as if you play different styles of Roman key card. Um, let's say that you're playing 1 4 0 3. It is indeed. Oh, I love it. What a great sequence this is. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yes. Go for it, Susie. This is standard standard Roman key card stuff, this. Yeehaw. Very nicely done. They certainly are. <laughs> That's a great slam. Absolutely great slam. Um, absolute, absolutely untouchable. Well done, guys. Or gals, rather. Very nicely bid. Okay, let's find one for north-south. Very nicely done.
Well, no, actually, two no trumps is Levensol here, Susie. Um, so, I mean, actually, the double here is really penalties. No, Esther, I stick with four hearts. I think South South double was a misbid here. I think she thought the double was Levensol. I'm not sure why actually South would double. Um But finish the hand, and we'll uh, we'll discuss it. Again, it depends on your interpretation of the double. <laughs> given that two no trumps is... Sorry, given that two no trumps is Levensol, even two no trumps isn't right here, Paula. We'll discuss it in a minute. Okay, does uh, East want to lead? Okay, just claim ten tricks. In fact, you're probably going to make 12, but um, it doesn't matter. Okay, so the question is, two hearts from north, you can all see now, is fine. Two spades, perfectly good overcall. Um, what should south do over two spades? Um, I think the standout bid here is four hearts. absolutely stand out bid you want to try and prevent west from coming in with four spades and so really you just want to bid as high as you can clearly you've got a great supporting hand for two hearts you know you've got a 10 card heart fit you've only got a singleton spade um, So you know that East West have got at least at least an eight card spade fit, and that's if Parton's got four card spades. But either way, um, you want to bid four hearts with the south hand. I wouldn't muck around with Levin Sol or anything. Um, I just think you want to bid what you think you can make as as quickly as possible to try and persuade East West um, that it's your hand and that. Uh, they should just let you play in four hearts. And probably against a good pair, um, they might bid four spades thinking it's going to make and actually it's a sacrifice, but it's a good sacrifice. Um, you might make five hearts. Um, in fact, you will as long as you go after the clubs. But certainly I think South shouldn't be messing around with uh, forcing inquiries or Levensol or anything. I would just bid four hearts. Okay. Uh, one more and then we'll call it a night. Let me find you a... Just bear with me a second.
No, no, it's not worth it for one hand, Wendy. Um, it's 11 o'clock. I've got to stop after this hand. Because we've not eaten yet, and it's 11 o'clock here. Uh, no, it's just our normal routine on a Saturday. Um, in the summer, when I'm starting at 12 o'clock, at 10 o'clock rather, we uh, UK time, we normally eat beforehand. Um, in the winter, when it's a nine o'clock start for me, uh, we sometimes eat afterwards. Oh, Esther. What a wimp. <laughs> I think at the very least you should be bidding three spades over two no trumps. At the very least. Personally, I bid four clubs with your hand in a nanosecond. Oh, my God. Oh well. Personally, guys, Grand Slams are there to be bid. <laughs> Esther, don't tell me you're looking at pictures of cards still. No, that that alert that, that alert is wrong. Oh, I'm going to kill Diana. She did these, I think. Right, ignore that full disclosure alert. That's that's 100% wrong. This is an invitational hand with spades and at least one minor okay so four diamonds is showing both majors Six 
diamonds. Fija. <laughs> Um, depends how how big a score you want to give North South, Susie. Really, <laughs> the thing is, Susie, is that you don't know. Well, I think that's very sensible. I, I mean, by all means, lead a heart. And if if uh, seven spades is going to go off, you're going to get a good result, whether it's doubled or not. Yes, I think it is. Knowing that South's got the Ace of Diamonds, um, sorry, knowing that North's got the Diamonds, we've covered everything else. From South's point of view, the King of Diamonds is crucial. Well done, uh, ladies. Very good. Um, like I said, personally, on the uh, the north hand, I bid four clubs. I don't even bid three spades. Three spades is invitational, effectively, with spades and a minor. In other words, if south was lower range, they can pass three spades. They don't have to bid four. Okay, when they bid four diamonds, this is clearly um, a cue bid for spades. In other words, their maximum. But it's now showing both majors, obviously, because they'd bid three no trumps if they had the club preempt, and they'd bid four clubs if they had both minors, and then let uh, North decide where to play. So four diamonds is definitely a cue bid for spades. But personally, I bid four clubs over two no trumps with that North hand. I think uh, it's just too nice whether partners got clubs or both minors or spades uh, I think you you want to make an unconditional unconditionally forcing response and four clubs is it okay guys uh, that's it for tonight um, I can't remember off the top of my head what we have next week uh, but the details are on the site and there will be a session next week you are welcome and uh, see you all next week.